Dan Tibbetts, and uh, I'm from Whitefield, the next town down, and uh, I'm in Windsor now, and I'm 61 years old. 33 years ago when I bought the farm, there were seven of us dairy farmers. Now I'm the last dairy farmer in the town. It's hard for me to, you know, even imagine uh, not farming. The only real crisis uh, I've, ha I've experienced in life was a divorce, and that was in 93. And with that divorce came a lot of suffering, but awakening. Uh, it was at that point that I realized my real love for the farm, uh, and farmed it alone for you know, seven years, finding what really was, I believe, meant for me to experience. Uh, and that was experiencing a farm family again. And, uh, and even probably more the experience of passing the farm on, uh, seeing the farm continue, uh, and leaving it uh, in someone else's hands the best way I can. All right, well, in order to do that, you've got to have a wife that can bear children. And all these women that I was dating, they'd been there and done that. They didn't want more children. They were too old. So, okay, i, I got to have a younger wife, <laughs> you know? And uh, I was, uh, my daughter was in Guatemala, and uh, I had a farmer friend out in New York that belonged to Latin Connections. And he was going down there for a week vacation where they invite women in and socialize and, and they advertised, you know, relationships. My name is Sandra. I'm 33 right now and I'm from Colombia. Somebody give me a page with all pictures of the guys with the names, what they are, where, in what um, city or state in the United States they live. It was funny. When I see the picture of Danny, I say, Oh, I like his eyes. And I tried to talk to Danny. <gasps> he has 15, 10 girls around him. I said, mm, he's not going to talk to me. And I come back to my city and my normal life working. I have my son Camilo already. And I start sending him letters. He never answered. <laughs> Send letters, he no answer. And finally I said to my sister Astrid, she has more knowledge in English than me, I say, Astrid, maybe I know right, right, I want to keep friend relationship with this guy. And she's helped me, uh, he said, he said, but you are too young. I say, no matter, I want to be your friend. And he goes to Colombia to, just to visit me once. And that was really nice. We still been just friends for three years. And after three years, I, he ever invited me, come on, come, come to the United States, come on, look at my life. I said, um, we see, we see. I was busy. I'm not thinking nothing serious. And one day I say, okay, we are going to the United States. I'm going to see how is your life there, if I like or no. Came together one afternoon when I was milking the cows and I was on my last cows on the end down there underneath that last fluorescent light that I... I think I said, uh, I think it's time for us to experience our first kiss. Finally, I say, okay, I marry you. And I love Danny because he is an amazing person. He is everything I never has. He's respectful, he's faithful, he is I don't know how to say many words, I don't know how to say in English, but él es amoroso, cariñoso, él es adorable in many ways. He's, and I, I tell him, you are so cute. Look at me, I'm not cute. He said, yes, you are so cute. The first flower in the spring, he put he brings it to me every year. And I've been fortunate that I have a lot to enjoy and I have two sons and a daughter here on the farm right now that I just get up in the morning and I can't wait to see the 
smile when they come out the barn or when they're eating my cereal or, or when they fall asleep on the tractor. It's tremendous. It's something that so many people miss. I have experienced my older kids and now my younger kids growing up uh, in a way that would be the envy of probably any man. And I, I pity the man that doesn't experience family. I mean, It isn't our life, it's what we pass on. And if I can pass on the love for family and for a family lifestyle that I have chosen, it will be greater than anything else I can accomplish in life.